Uh, hi, everybody. My presentation today is about applying the Coleman filter um, uh, and improving the signal to noise ratio of full tensor gravity gradiometry data. Um, Full tensor gravity data is known for its high resolution, but it also have high noise in its components due to the dynamic nature of the platform using in data acquisition. And um, common low pass filter usually remove the small scale and low wavelength features in the area, so they are not very successful in uh, processing. That's why we decided to apply Coleman filter to investigate if we can improve the signal to noise ratio and if we can process the FTG data. Um, the data set that we have was from Belgium space. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about the study area a little bit and the important, uh, importance of the area. Uh, the FTG data and its nature and very quickly, I will talk about common filter and some extensions of the filter that we applied and then some results that we got. Um, the Winton Salt Dome located southwest of Winton is considered important for us because it's a typical dome of the Gulf Coast area. So if we can apply the filter successfully on that, there is a hope that we can extend application of filter on other areas as well. And it's the most likely locality for oil exploration in the area. It's a probable source of the unconventional reservoirs based on USGS uh, reports. There are about, there is about 9 billion cubic feet of gas in the area, but conventional uh, methods like, the methods like seismic is not very successful in um, exploring those resources. So we need some other me methods like full tensor gravity to explore those reservoirs. And the other point which was important for us was availability of other geophysical data sets so we could compare our results with the previous studies in the area. Um, the data that we got from Belgium space was consisted of 53 uh, profiles, 250 meters along, apart with each other, with a center area um, with, um, with the center area in field with 125 meter profiles. Um, and then we had 17 tie lines in the area. Um, we, try, we applied the common filter on each profile separately, but we tried to investigate the behavior of the filter on a line and a tie line that goes through the middle of, that goes through the, the salt dome anomaly to to be able to investigate the filter. Um, as the previous speaker <laughs> said, um, explained, uh, full tensor gradiometry data has, has, is, a, has a, is a tensor which has nine different components. Um, and, because, uh, and due to the uh, conservative characteristic of the gravity field, just six of the components are unique. And then it's a symmetric matrix. And then due to, because it obeys the Laplace's equations, just five of the components are independent. So in applying the Coleman filter, we try to apply six and then five components at the same time. Um, the, the full tensor gravit gradiometric data is more sensitive to lateral density variations. Um, so it, it, it can be used in near, in ex, in near surface explorations. Um, each of the components of the FTG gives us a unique information. Um, and in applying Coleman filter, we try to investigate more on TZZ component because it emphasizes on edges more than other, much better than other components. Um, so, so let's start talking about common filter with, with a simple example. Suppose we want to have, we want to estimate the, the position of an object just based on the noisy measurements that we have. We'll start with the first measurement. Um, as all we know, there, there's still some uncertainty in measurements. So there is some deviation in our estimations. 
So first, so this is my, uh, this is our first measurement, and this is, it tells us uh, the, how, uh, it tells us how, or how we are sure about our measurements. So if sigma is broad, it tells us that we are not very sure about our, that particular measurement. So if, in the case of having just the first measurement, the best estimation that we can have is Z1, and we are like this much uncertain about, about our estimations. Then we made the second measurement. This time, suppose that the, the second person that is measuring is more trained and he or she is more uh, accurate in measuring the position. So it is the, the second estimation has a narrower, the second probability density has a narrower shape. And if you want to have the best estimation just based on the second estimation, we would say this is the position and we are sure about our this estimation like this much. But, but what will happen if we want to incorporate both estimations and to get the best estimations, to the, 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 the both measurements to have the best estimations. That's exactly what Coleman filter does. It tries to combine different measurements to have the best estimation. So this is the, this is these equations, this equations gives us the best estimation and it tells us how much uh, confidence there is in the estimations. We all can see that if we are not very sure about like the first estimations, then less, more weight would be given to the second estimates, the second measurement. And the, the other important point that we can figure, that we can see here is that um, the estimation error based on both measurements has a uncertainty less than each of the other measurements. And it is uh, predictable because we all agree that even noisy measurements has some, kind, some information. So we, the, the estimations which is based on the both measurement would have less uncertainty. But what's going on inside the black box of the Coleman filter? When we run the Coleman filter, um, first the filter tries to use the update, time update equations to predict, the, to predict the best estimation of the next point and then having the feedback from the measurement of that particular point, it tries to correct its estimations and it gives us a posteriori update and the posteriori estimation covariance. That's how the Coleman filter works and it iterates for each, po for each measurement point. So when we want to run and tune the Coleman filter, we, we need to, first we need to build a model and then we need to initiate the process with an estimation and the process noise estimation. And then we need to iterate the filter for each point. We started applying the Coleman filter with standard Coleman filter. Um, what is matter here in standard Coleman filter is uh, how we want the filter to trust our measurement or trust the model that we have defined for the system. So in case of low Q, we are telling the filter that we are more certain about our model and we, are, we, we, we want to give less weight to the measurement. So as you can see, we cannot get to the, to the peak as much as we want, but we can filter the data. We can remove the noise in these areas properly. But when we tell the filter that we want to trust our measurements more and we want to give less weight to the model, then the filter tries to um, trust or trust, trust the measurements more so it can get to the peak very, very well, but it cannot filter as much, as much as we want it to do or as, as much as it did here. So, that's why we decided to apply or try different extensions of Coleman filter because it, was, it is not easy to tell the filter how to, how to do that, how to, yeah, how to trust the measurements. 
So we tried the fading memory Coleman filter, which gives more weight to the more recent measurements. Then here, that's the, that's the standard Coleman filter, and this is the fading memory Coleman filter. So it, here we are forcing the filter to give more weight to the most recent measurements. As you can see, we cannot, we couldn't filter that much in fading memory Coleman filter. We tried the smoothers. There are different kinds of smoothers, like fixed point, fixed lag, or fixed interval. We tried fixed lag smoothers. Um, in fixed lag smoothers, we try to include n future time steps in our estimations as well. So this is the standard Coleman filter, and this is the fixed lagged Coleman filter with considering three future points in, 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 in estimations. Um, then we try to incorporate some more information. We try to incorporate Laplace's equation, and then we form the Laplace's equation con constraint Coleman filter. We tried two different approaches to do that, and we also apply the filter forward and backward to get rid of the bias that we had here. So we check our results with the Bell Geospace because they had a very sophisticated filter and we wanted to make sure our filter works. So we say that we can get, we can get the pick very well and then we can um, filter the data properly. Um, then we tried to have the 2D plots. This is the raw data. This is the Bell Geospace people filter data, and this is our common filter data. We also checked our results with um, some faults and features that were um, that were detected in the area previously, and we can have we can see a good agreement here with the previous results detected in the area. So it can. So we can conclude that Coleman filter is the best estimate, best linear estimations. It can process multiple components simultaneously. It is good because it provides estimation error for for the estimations. So we can make sure that how accurate we are. And Coleman filter process data have greater dynamic range than previously filtered data and also have the ability to extract signal from noisy data without having to remove a bound of wave numbers. And it can investigate high wave number signals associated with near surface lateral density variations. Thank you. Questions? Um, um, I mean, um, it can, we can get, you know, I mean, we can filter very properly and then we can get the peak. That's, that's, that's why I mean from high dynamic range. Yeah. 